Hi, I'm Karan Thapar. Over the last few years, I hope you've been watching my program, The Interview on the Wire. During that period, I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors, and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me, it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these, as you know, are tough times. And if this program is going to remain bold, independent, and sometimes even defiant, then I think we need your support. At the end of the day, it's a truism, but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers. So if you would like this program to remain the way it is, forthright, outspoken, and interesting, then would you consider supporting us? All you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom. But more than anything else, I hope you will continue to watch the interview. Your viewership means an awful lot to me. Hello and welcome to a special interview for The Wire. The recent spate of horrifying videos and reports from Manipur have traumatized the country. But they raise a disturbing question. How much more has happened that we do not as yet know about? In other words, could the full truth be a lot worse than we presently think? Joining me to help answer that question is someone who's been in Manipur. He's been in the valleys, he's been in the hills, he's seen for himself and he's talked widely the author and journalist and consultant to several Christian television channels, Babu Verghese. Mr. Verghese, as I said in that introduction, the recent spate of videos and reports from Manipur have horrified and traumatized the country. We know about the two women stripped naked and raped on the 4th of May, about the two car wash attendants raped and killed on the 5th, the 18-year-old who was gang raped and killed on May the 15th, as well as the women who were locked into their houses and burnt to death, and the women students who had to hide inside toilets in Manipur University to save themselves from marauding Maite mobs. All of this raises the question, how much more has happened that we don't know about? You've been recently in Manipur, both in the valley and the hills. You've seen for yourself, you've spoken widely. So let me ask you that question, how much more has happened that we don't know about. Karanji, let me first thank you for your incisive questions and insightful answers you get. You have been consistently following up this story. Thank you. Now, five days we were there. It was along with uh, Reverend Dr. Johnson, Fekadale, and uh, three uh, TV channels. We went through right for 12 to 13 hours every day. Uh, we got some support and protection from the commandos and uh, other forces so we could go through that place. It's extremely horrifying. One word I would say, Manipur smells blood. The soil of Manipur has turned black and, and gray because of the uh, burned down churches, burned down houses and burned down shops and schools and institutions. What we see is just a tip of the iceberg. And several more stories we hear every day, every moment. We could meet several leaders from Maithai, both Hindu and Christian, Naga leaders, cookie leaders, student leaders, women leaders, and we could get a first-hand information. But in any battle, as you know, truth is the first casualty. So we need to listen to both the stories and come into conclusion. Tears worries, fear. Anytime you may be killed. In Manipur, there are no human beings today. Everybody is tagged as a Meitai or a Kuki or some other, and they are attacked one after the other. That's a problem. So what has happened in these days was there's no human milk of kindness. There is just you find out what you are, who you are, and attack. My Can I ask you, Mr. Vergis? Are there more horror stories that you know of that we haven't found out about as yet? Is there a lot worse to be found out that we are still in 
in ignorance of? The first story is that as I landed in uh, Imphal, I got into a house, I met a lady uh, whose sister-in-law is a cookie and her, her brother is a, a, a meithi. She said, now today it is 82 days that she is hiding somewhere. A group of people entered into their house on the dead night and some of them were known to them, but they had no kindness. They wanted to find out where is this, this uh, uh, cookie woman. Somehow they managed to take, get her out of the back, through the back door and uh, she is, has been running from one house to other and they, she is hiding and with her two-year-old son, this is the 82 years and she doesn't know where her husband is. Like that, the story is galore. My second story, I went to the village near Kogopit, uh, yeah, uh, Kogopki. There, we were standing on the place where seven dead bodies were left without burying, without burning. Their dead bodies were allowed to be given to the dogs. They had a heyday and dogs had enjoyed that and nobody cared for that. And no one is that in the village. Around 100, 150 houses were burned down. My third story is from uh, the president of the Cookie Women Fundamental Rights Association, Mrs. Kinley. She said uh, some of the Methi women entered into the Imphal Nursing College and got few women, uh, girls out of it. And with all their plea, nothing happened. And they were raped and one was killed, one escaped somehow. Then she also said on the 4th of May, she was in, the, in, the, in her office. Her daughter has a clinic in Nemphal. And some people got in and they, they looted the gun shop nearby. And they wanted to kill some people. Three Methi men came and, and asked her uh, refuge. And she, she got them in and closed the door and saved them. Then, one of the villages uh, in Kongopi, we saw a lady who has, who, with her two children and her mother and three other women, they ran through the jungles for three days. And at last, she was rescued from, by some Naga people. And she's in a school run by Catholics in the refuge camp. Let me ask you about that first story you told me. Yes. You're saying this young lady with her child, a yes. two-year-old child, I think you said, has been hiding from house to house for 82 days. Yes. And she is, as far as you know, still hiding in fear because she's a kooky in the middle of Maite dominated Imphal. Is that right? Absolutely. Last night, I, I confirmed with that still she is hiding. She has not seen her husband for 82 days. Where is her husband? Does anyone know? Yes, at least his sister knows where, it, where he is. But she is, they have no communication possibility, so she doesn't know. The wife doesn't know where her husband is. You also, spoke about, you also spoke about a village where dead bodies, I think you said seven or eight dead bodies had been left, no one buried them, and the dogs had a heyday, as you put it, eating them. Exactly. We were standing, my uh, my TV crew, the Asianet and... Uh, 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 and uh, the uh, uh, goodness TV and Shekhinah TV, they 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 they, they, sh they took the photographs on that of that place. Yes, and we saw from village to from house to house, we went there, just rubbles, nothing else. You've told me three or four stories that are deeply distressing. How many more such stories are there that we don't know about? We visited a few. Refugee camps, they don't like that to be called refugee camps, both Meite and others. Absolutely, you cannot stand there just even for one hour, one minute without tears. Hundreds and hundreds of children looking into the sky, staring into the sky, asking us, can you help us? Can you help us? Sir, we have no food, no shelter, no clothing, no father, no mother. Some have mothers, some have fathers. And one young man said, sir, I was a teacher. The only income was from teaching. My school is completely destroyed and burned down. I have no job. I have three children. What shall I do? The story is galore, one after the other. You said 
that what we know from the papers, what we know from television is just the tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. Do you really mean that? Do you really yes. mean that? Absolutely, I mean it. If you go through that, not only six stories, currently 6,000 stories more every day, stories after stories after stories. You get it. It's a story of tears and fear and threats and no future. Tell me something. Has the violence, the raping and the killing been one-sided? That is an impression that has developed in the last few days. Or are the kooky also guilty of perpetrating it? In other words, have both been doing virtually the same to each other? There's a two sides to that. Meite is claimed that uh, we, we, we had problem to to uh, to secure our 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 land and other things and uh, we have definitely been involved in killings but the cookies say we were only defending but we have to take it in a, uh, a pinch of salt see there have been definitely attacks in that places but according to the figures given by them uh, they have figures of so many uh, uh, cookie churches cookie houses they have all the figures there we we went to uh, Lemga, now they call it Churchanpur, they call it Lemga. There they have the memorial place. They have given a list daily. They are updating the list of that, saying so many have, have been killed, so many uh, died, so many lost the houses and everything. This morning, the newspapers have, have given, the Waipai Students Association has given us the latest figure of, uh, of, 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 of these women killed. There are some reports. Yes. I don't know if you've heard them, I'm not sure if they're confirmed, of an attack that happened in Kham and Lok somewhere around the middle of June. Yes. It was an alleged attack by Maites at night on Kuki villages and apparently the Kukis then defended or retaliated. And there are some reports that say maybe 100, 200 may have ended up being killed. There are also reports that the chief minister got the army and the Gorkhas to come in and help clean up and take away the dead bodies. Have you heard about that? I heard about it, but no details are available because th there's no internet, no facility. I went to the director of the electronics where thousands of children and youth, youth are gathering just to get 10 minutes of interview uh, of internet connection. But, but Father Vargis, you're saying you have heard about this yes. incident. I'm deliberately using a mild word in common law, yes. where perhaps hundreds I'm not sure of the number, are alleged to have been killed. You heard of this? I heard about it. People are talking, but they are not able to confirm it, the numbers. The, the incident has taken place, definitely. And you also believe that, in fact, regardless of what both sides give as their explanation, both are reasonably equally guilty of violence, raping and killing. Is that what you've also heard? But cookies, they, they said, we have never raped anybody. In fact, that uh, association, uh, women association president told us there were, there were, they, they say. Your line has frozen. In the cookie area. But somehow, we, we also saw Maiti houses being bulldozed in cookie area, in Lamga. But they say, we allowed the men and the children to go with their uh, things, but afterwards only we bulldozed it or burned it down. But you saw Mete houses in Lamka, which is the kooky name for Chura Chandpur, being bulldozed in front of your eyes. Yes, at least four houses I saw. You saw the kooky bulldozing four Maite houses in front of your eyes. I saw the bulldoze, bulldozers are doing it that day when we visited in one house. And four other houses we saw, it is already demolished. And the Kuki claimed that they had allowed the residents, the inhabitants to leave first. So no they, one was injured. Exactly. That's what they said. But are you sure of that? That's what they claim. Do but, you have uh, anybody verifying it? Yeah, but uh, who is there? I mean, who was there, whom we could uh, verify. That's a little problem. Yeah. You said that the Kuki told you that they have only retaliated in self-defense. You claim that they have not targeted women, children, or raped them. How confident are you that that is correct and you're not being misled? Uh, I believe them because they emphatically say that we don't do that. We only do it for defending. They, they, they say we have not attacked. That's what they claim. They have not attacked. Now, the BBC, four or five days ago on its website, carried a story by Sotik Biswas 
which talks about four Maite villages that have been attacked by the Kuki. The villages are Dolai Tabi, Ekoi, Yang Haman, and Leiton Pokpi. Are you aware of these four villages and the fact that the BBC says that they were attacked by Kukis? Well, I, I don't think they were attacked recently. They were attacked in the early days of the trouble. When I we were there, we didn't hear about that. Definitely some of the villagers, they would have attacked also nearby. Maybe having known that a group of Maitis or others are coming to attack them, they would have preempted it. Let's move on beyond atrocities on human beings. Tell me about the state of churches in Imphal. The Archbishop of Imphal has told the Indian Express that 249 have been destroyed. Kuki sources insist that the figure is 357. What is the condition of churches in Imphal? In a letter that Kokomi, the Maite organization, wrote yesterday to the President of the European Parliament, they insist that the majority of churches in Imphal are standing and functioning and conducting services. So tell me, what did you see with your eyes about the condition of churches in Imphal? Yes, these numbers exactly we do not know, but they claim that 241 churches were demolished or burned down within 36 hours. But in the Imphal Baptist Church, I got in there, uh, the pastor told me, it's a beautiful 67-year-old church, he said, a night around 2 o'clock on May 3rd or 4th, uh, around 100 people go, got in there. They tried to open it. Some of it was at an iron door. They could not open it. After an hour, they left. It is there in the CCTV. I saw that. But the church is intact. That church is intact. A few churches are intact. But these churches, you say, it's not big buildings and all. It's a small thatched places, thin sheets. That's why so much of number is there. Thin Tell sheets. Me are... something. How many destroyed churches did you see in Imphal? In Imphal, I saw at least 10. 10? Yes. How many churches did you see that are still functioning where services are held? Uh, this Imphal church, they have not started, but they, it, it is conducive. They can have their, their, their churches there, he said. Now, the Maite Christian Churches Council has issued a statement claiming that one and a half lakh Maite Christians have been attacked by Kuki Christians. Separately, Professor Homan Thang Jung told me in an interview last week that at least four Maite churches have been destroyed in the hills. From what you saw, from what you were told, can you verify these allegations? Yes, I am very much aware of that. There were two young men. I don't know whether I should tell them name, their name, uh, Rohit and Samuel. They are the two young people who came out with this story. They say were, they were compelled by the perpetrators to say that it was uh, Maitre churches were burned down and attacked by Kuki. And he, we, we talked to the, his own father, Samuel's father. He said, no, I don't accept what my son is saying. And this is not true. Uh, that is what their claim is. They said it's a it's it's an, a, a master plan by the perpetrators of the crime to 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 vilify the name of the cookies. That's what they claim. So you're saying that the claim made by the Maite Christian Churches Council, you allege that a young man called Rohit is perpetrating this and is, Samuel. Yeah. is a falsehood. That's what that's what uh, uh, his own father said. Samuel's own father said. What about Maiti churches in the hills? Yes, Professor definitely. Sanjam told us that yes. at least four had been destroyed in the hills. It is That's true. It by the cookie. It is true. I verified. They said it is It is destroyed. So it is true. The cookie yes. have destroyed Maiti churches in the hills. That part is true. Yes. As I said yesterday, Kukomi, the Maiti organization, wrote a letter to the president of the European Parliament and the letter claims, and now I'm quoting, Maite Christians are being ethnically cleansed from Chura Chanthpur, Saikul and Kang Pokpi districts. And the letter claims this happened on the 3rd and 4th of May. You, I know, have been to Chura Chanthpur, the Kuki now call it Lamka. You've been to Kang Pokpi. Is this allegation of Maite Christians being cleansed in these districts true? Half true, false, which is it? Not only Christians, there is a marked geographical, not necessarily legal, geographical and demographic separation. 
no maithe can go to beyond churchandbu beyond that place to anywhere uh, that will be the end let me tell you very frankly then no cookie can come into maithe that's done it's a done story so that is the so a, a a demographic separation has already taken place i have seen uh, a, a, uh, the I, i went to the morgue the 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 uh, the mortuary where i saw several bodies not yet buried they said till their demand for separate administration is is accepted we are not going to bury the dead So, Mr. Vargis, when you talk about demographic and geographic separation, are you saying that the claim made by Kukhomi in that letter yesterday to the President of the European Parliament that Maithe Christians are being ethnically cleansed is a falsehood? It's not ethnic cleansing. It's just that all the Maithe have left the hills and gone to the valley, and similarly in reverse, all the Kuki have left the valley and gone to the hills. so it's not ethnic cleansing it's just that both sides have fled from each other for fear exactly but there is another other side to it why the maithe christians churches were destroyed that's an issue therefore many allege allege that it is a genocide of christians it's a beginning of that so that uh, as you had the interview with mr pramod singh he said i will wipe out the christians now the allegation is that christians most of them are cookies most of them are christians that is why it's taking place it's an allegation made by some quarters but the important thing is that you confirm at least four maithe christian churches in the hills were demolished by the cookies that you do confirm i do confirm you saw those demolished churches no 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 somebody i asked this question they said to what this has happened so knowledgeable people who you believe and rely upon told you this has happened exactly now while steward in manipur did you get any sense of the role played by maithe organizations like arambai thengol and maithe lipon there are a lot of reports and accusations in the papers that these two organizations have been targeting and terrorizing the tribals ie the cookies did you hear about them in what sort of language were they spoken about yes i heard about it now we need to distinguish now see it is not the hindus who did that work it is the extremists in that religion we had a peace rally more than 20 groups of people joined we had the peace rally i asked a hindu a very senior man who was at the rally he said we are hindus we will never do that these are extremists one way he used the terrorists which i don't want to say they are extremists with the ideology of hatred that they have done that again the the chief of the uh, of the uh, or one of the uh, religious groups told me that in in our way even thinking of a murder is itself is sin and 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 it will uh, uh, get punishment so we hindus don't do that they reiterate digging in and again you're making a very important point they said this is no, the i'm of... interrupting you mr vaghis okay. you're making a very important point that this is not hindu versus christian it is not but but the extremists who have this ideology of hatred that 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 uh, leap uh, push them to this genocide and when you say extremists are you referring to arambai thengol and maithe dipon they are referring to these two in manipur so the you were told by people in manipur that the groups responsible for the violence are the arambai thengol and maithe lipon is that what you're saying a lot of them including some uh, senior uh, maithe people who are not christians told me so maithe people themselves told you that arambai thengol and maithe lipon are responsible for the violence the killing the rape exactly these are trustworthy reliable people yes and people who love manipur who love everybody they said it should stop peace peace that's all they cry let's come to other critical issues from everything you saw from everything you heard from different people both from the maithe and from the kuki how effective how professional how impartial is the manipur police yes the manipur police is in a dire situation see if they they protect the maithe people they will be accused of siding with them by the cookies if they do the same with the cookies they are accused of siding the other 
No, we had the experience. Every five miles, ten miles, our team was blocked, checked by who? Meitei women and police just watching over. One of the places I went, one lady said uh, some God's name and you know she was insisting almost. I said, Namaste, Namaste. Meanwhile, the commando came and rescued us. We, our, our, our work could go. I don't know who gave them the authority. They, they are civilians. The authority to check people. They check Please. all our records because we were media Mr. people. Mr. Vargis, and also let me stop you again. Mr. Vargis, are you talking about the Mira Paibi? Setting exactly. up roadblocks and stopping exactly. users? Exactly. 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 But what about the role the Mira Paibi play? How is that spoken of both by the Maite and by the Cookie? Yes, they are there. They as if they are the rulers of the country. They are the people who protect or whatever they do. They 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 were there as police people. Nobody can. You no, know, uh, uh, Reverend Johnson. Uh, his he was asked to give them money. In other words, the Mira Paibe are acting as police authorities. Exactly. They, they they extort money from those who who go. And we found out they said if this is to buy arms, and if somebody is not coming out of their house to join in the blockade, they will, uh, each person will be fined 500 rupees. It's a reliable. How do you know that they extort money and how do you know that money is used by the media Paivi to buy arms? Did you yes. see that and hear it directly from someone who knows? Yes, yes. Reverend Dr. Johnson, who was with us, we left a day earlier. Next day, this happened to him. He gave all the money. And some of the Naga people there said this, this is spent for uh, buying arms. What about the army and paramilitary? How are they viewed by the two communities? Both of them sus are suspicious because they are also not able to implement, to execute anything in protecting. It is all left to the mob. Now, this, this also brings me to the mind. The latest data on arms being stolen. I use the word stolen. One IPS officer, retired IPS officer told me, what, you can't even take a waste paper from a police station. You say, arms are stolen from our armory. Uh, it is said that around 4,500 uh, uh, revolver and mortar and other things. Now, eight, one journalist told me, they now say it's more than 8,000. No one has a, has a count on it. But are you saying that these weren't stolen or looted? They were actually handed over by the police? Is that what you're suggesting? I don't say to use the word handed over. They had an open access. Somehow, either these officers who were protecting, they fled or they couldn't do anything about it. Again, have you been told this by reliable... I cannot uh, blame uh, a police force for handing over. No, I will not do that. That's not but right. They will been, never do that. But they were have helpless. Have you been told this Somehow, by reliable in authorities? A, in a photograph. There are people barged in and they took the whole arms, not only in one places. Just this morning's newspaper, I saw so many places arm, uh, 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 armor, uh, uh, armories were... were, were, were Mr. Vargis, this story that you're telling me, that the police handed them over, has this been told to you by reliable, authoritative, credible people? I didn't say that the police handed over. Police were helpless. I didn't say that they handed over. They will never do that. They will not hand it over, but they were helpless. That's what we were told. With the mob coming in, the lynching mob coming in, what they could do? Now, on Saturday, tens, maybe even hundreds of Maite people living in Mizoram started leaving the state in panic after a statement by the Mizo group Pamra advised them to leave Mizoram for their own safety. Are you worried that the problem in Manipur is now starting to spread across the Northeast as a whole? Yes. My friend uh, uh, in Imphal, I asked him this question late last night. He said, it's true. Hundreds and hundreds of them are fleeing, uh, maybe because of rumor or may maybe because of fear. That's happening. And this is the beginning of the hate, uh, hate campaign by the powers that be, that some group of people will be protected. Some minorities will be ethnically cleansed. That is going from Manipur. It, this will lead to other places. Now, this has begun not here in Chhattisgarh, in Kandamal, in Manoharpur, in, in, in Dang district. This has been going on for years. Kind of ethnic cleansing has been going on. Finally, last Wednesday, there were unconfirmed reports on social media 
that a young Puki called Emmanuel Hamar was killed by a group of Maite with knives. That was what social media was claiming and that his body was then found in Nellore in Andhra Pradesh. However, today's Hindu claims has a story where it said that he died in police custody and the Hindu reports people who allege that there was police negligence. Now you're speaking to us from Hyderabad. Do you have any knowledge of this particular incident? I spoke to a person, but uh, uh, the, the line was cut off, so I couldn't get him again. Uh, some say he fell from a train, but there are different vers versions to that. But the report I have got that last time he spoke to his wife saying, Maithi people are surrounding me, I am in danger. That's the last sentence the, the family heard, it seems. So the truth is we simply don't know what happened, whether he was, as social media alleges, attacked by Maithi people, or whether he was in trouble because he'd fallen off a bridge, I think you said, or maybe because of something else, he's in police custody and died because of police negligence. It could be any of those three. Any of those. I saw the picture. I don't know. I don't know. We, unless the police gives the real fact, we will not be able to find out. I'm going to end by once again asking you a critical question, Mr. Vargis. You began by giving me three, four stories of terrible things that have happened to individuals. You're absolutely certain when you say that we don't know the full truth as yet, that there's much more that has happened that we haven't found out about. You're absolutely sure you're right when you say that. Absolutely right. But Karanji, I have a public request to our prime minister. Please involve you. We are your children. We are your brothers and sisters. We are Singh. Modi ji, Amit Shah ji, please stop this. Please interfere. Please interfere. Please stop. You, you can do that. You are the people who can stop any riots within minutes, within hours. What's happening? Your silence, can we say, is it complicity? I'm not alleging that. But please stop this. We are crying. Go to Manipur and see the tears of our people, fellow Indians, brothers and sisters. Will you stop? I remember the words of Jesus. Jesus said, be, be still and know that I am God. Modiji, God is on the throne. Please help the Indians from this ethnic genocide and cleansing. Zivagis, thank you very much for speaking to us, for sharing with us some of the details of things we don't know about. It's a sad truth that you've told us that a lot more has happened in Manipur, done no doubt by both sides to each other. And we do not as yet know the full story. The videos and the reports that have already traumatized and shocked us are, as you said, the tip of the iceberg. I truly dread to find out the full truth. But thank you for opening our eyes based upon what you saw personally, the areas in Manipur that you visited and the people you spoke to. Take care. Stay thank, safe. Thank you, Karanji, for inviting us. God bless you. Hi, I'm Karan Thapar. Over the last few years, I hope you've been watching my program, The Interview on The Wire. During that period, I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors, and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me, it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these, as you know, are tough times. And if this program is going to remain bold, independent, and sometimes even defiant, then I think we need your support. At the end of the day, it's a truism but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers. So if you would like this program to remain the way it is, forthright, outspoken, and interesting, then would you consider supporting us? All you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom. But more than anything else, I hope you will continue to watch the interview. Your viewership means an awful lot to me.